No, I haven't started screen sharing yet. Good morning. We are back for Plone Conference 2021, day two, track two, with Philip Bauer, who's a friend of mine. Well, at least I, I hope he's a friend of mine. We are back for Plone Conference Oop. 2021. Day Oh, that was embarrassing, <laughs> but not more usual, not any more embarrassing than the kind of things that Philip pulls in his live demos and his coding. No, actually, I'm kidding. Philip is, as you know, a leader in the Plone community, a uh, developer who got Plone migrated or upgraded, who led the effort to migrate it to Python 3. And he continues in his efforts to make the migration even easier. As you know, he's also the creator of the Mastering Plone class. And so today, Philip is going to be talking to us about Plone relations, which are a very powerful feature of Plone. And I'm very pleased to have him take it away. Thank you, uh, Kim. Uh, thanks for the kind introduction. I'll uh, not waste any more words about myself. Um, so you might have been there a year ago. Uh, where I gave a lightning talk uh, saying uh, why relations are awkward or weird or something like that. Uh, nasty. By the way, do you like my hoodie here? The Plone hoodie it just arrived. I just before this talk, I had to uh, jump on the bike and go to the uh, post office to pay my, uh, my taxes uh, for that. Uh, so it's here. Excellent. So relations. Why, um, why did I change my mind? Uh, because uh, people help me uh, to improve things in such a way that uh, uh, my mind got changed. But um, before that, uh, what are relations in Plone? So let me read you this. Uh, in line one of the readme of Zetsy relation, that's like the core of it all, it says the relation catalog can be used to optimize intransitive and transitive searches for n array relations of fi finite uh, preset dimensions. Okay, I guess would be my reaction to that. And a bit later in line 1967, it says in the same readme, okay, the next part is where your brain hurts. Hang on. It continues from there. And I say, please make it stop. So uh, why am I saying you this? Be uh, because relations in Plone uh, are incredibly powerful and they can, this is an, a very simple example of what they can do. They can model, this is a family tree and you can ask the relation catalog for uh, all children and grandchildren of Harry and you get the appropriate results. And um, it, it covers circular relations and all these words that I actually mostly don't even know uh, the real meaning of. And uh, the thing is, Plone doesn't use any of that. It is like a, I'm lacking a good uh, comparison, but it, it's, it's like a toddler in a Lamborghini. Um, so related uh, relations in Plone are mostly, uh, are only, only used in three places. Uh, one is the related items field, which you can see in this screenshot. Uh, in Plone 5 and in Plone uh, five, uh, 6 in Volto. Uh, it is a relation list where you can link to arbitrary items like a see also thingy. Uh, and there is also uh, two additional relations that don't have a corresponding field, the working copy relation where a working copy reference, references is ori its original or vice versa, I actually don't know. And the link integrity relation called is referencing, which links all, uh, it all items that are linked to each other in a HTML uh, link. If you use a internal link that doesn't only uh, create the, the link in HTML, but it also stores a reference that is used to give you a warning when you delete something that is referenced from another page. So these two tools, by the way, have their own API and they all work fine. And we only have this one field. 
But in relations are much more complex than that, uh, than it looks. Uh, there were a couple of things that are uh, needed to build a single relation. I'm not going to read the names of all these packages. Uh, a couple of you will know some of them by heart. Some of them are less important for relations. Some are more important, but uh, with they are all required, plus all the dependencies, which is uh, basically the whole stack. Uh, so the situation is, yeah, is pretty complex. And the question is, um, is, is that okay? And my answer is yes. Um, that's actually totally fine. And we can, uh, we can consider that uh, as a interesting tidbit of information that you can just forget from now on, because it's, it's not going anywhere. It is good because this stack is stable. It is super fast. It is extremely flexible, way more flexible than Plone needs. And it actually is documented, even though I would make a question mark there because I am not sure about you, but I didn't understand what I just read to you at the beginning of this talk. Uh, Gary Poster, if you, if, you, if you see this at some point, what the actual fuck are you trying to tell me? So um, why am I giving this talk? Uh, there must be something new, otherwise I wouldn't do that. There are four things that are actually new and I want to show them off to you and uh, tell you how your life will be much easier in the future or from now on or actually a couple of months in the past. Number one is a sane Python API for relations. Number two, a control panel to manage, inspect and rebuild relations. Three, helpers to do exactly the same. Uh, four, better and more relation fields. So number one is a sane Python API for relations. In Plone API, starting with version 2.00 alpha 1, just uh, released a couple of days ago. Uh, the Plone API package has a module for relations and it has basically CRUD, get, create, and delete. And here are two examples. Uh, the first one creates a relation um, to, um, how does that, now that this is get sorry it's not create it's get I was wondering because that wouldn't work for a create obviously because the uh, source is missing. Uh, this returns a list of all relations uh, where Bob is the friend of some, someone so whoever considers Bob their friend is being returned as a relation in this uh, case. And uh, the good thing about this API, there's a lot of many, many, many good things, but it only returns those, rela those relations where the object is actually something that you can uh, have the permission to watch. Un unless you say unrestricted equals true, then it does something like an unrestricted catalog search, uh, which returns brains for objects that you're not allowed to see. Uh, the other example is re it returns all relations that are going out from Alice, no matter which one. If Alice has a version, uh, a, a working copy, if it has related items, and so on. So all of these that are going out. Uh, another example for the create uh, method is this creates a relation uh, with the name friend uh, from Bob to Alice. So Alice is now Bob's friend. And um, no matter uh, what kind of field uh, Bob has, so we Plone uh, bill is built on, on schema-driven content. So if there is a field, for example, a relation list or a relation choice on Bob, then, and the fee, this field is called friend, then uh, the field is updated, which means either it is, uh, Alice is added uh, to this relation list, or if it's a relation choice, uh, Alice is set as the relation choice. And if there was something else, it was, it's going to be replaced. Um, if there is no field, then just the relation is created, similar to the working copy or is um, to the link integrity relation. There's also delete. Uh, the first example deletes all of Alice's friends. And the second examples deletes all enemy relations in the whole database, no matter from where or, the, or to whom. So that is a really, uh, and again, in this, in the delete example, the, uh, the fields that are corresponding with enemy uh, with this, these relations uh, are uh, updated uh, lists and choice fields. 
Um, this is uh, supported, uh, supports only Python 3. It will be shipped in Plon 6. You can probably use it in uh, Plon 5.2 if you run Python uh, 3. Um, but if for Python 5, uh, for Plon 5 uh, projects, you should consider using collective relation helpers, which has the same API methods uh, with a slightly different, they work slightly different. That it doesn't have delete, uh, and it's, it's called get relations for get and link objects for create. Uh, and the methods are vary a little, but we had a couple of discussions before finishing the PLIP uh, to add this to Plone API. And uh, the uh, the better solution is now in Plone API, but uh, I didn't want to change the collective relation helpers uh, implementation because I'm using that all over the place. So number two is a control panel for relations. Uh, so in, uh, there's also a plip for that. The other one was a plip. This is also a plip. It, it is, uh, looks like this. So there in plan six, you can have a new action uh, in, in a new link in the control panels and you can go there and I'm gonna demo that quickly. If I can manage. So this one. So here inspect relations is the uh, is the the control panel and it gives you a drop down list of all kinds of relations that exist in the database. So this database has a couple of relations, including um, let's inspect uh, Projektleiter, which is like the, uh, the leader of a project. And it shows all pro Projektleiter relations and you can. So uh, this project has this Projektleiter. That is nice and good. And there can be multiple uh, project leads. Uh, but it can also show that as back relation. So switch the uh, logic around, the display logic around, which shows you, so this person is the uh, project lead for these projects. So that is in this case, a more interesting uh, relation uh, display and you get more information out of that. This uh, control panel has a couple of additional features because it can uh, allows you to inspect all relations in one table and it has a magic button at the bottom. And if you heard any of my talks about in-place relation, uh, in-place migrations ever in the last two years, you will realize that this button can be a total lifesaver. I'm not clicking here, even though this is just a local instance, but it'll probably take a while because this will uh, purge all relations from the database uh, it will store them in an annotation on the portal, load this annotation and recreate all uh, relations uh, on their fields, populate the, uh, the appropriate uh, uh, choice and list fields and all the other relations will be re uh, restored. Um, so why is that interesting? Why is that important? Come, going back to relations, the reason why this uh, makes sense in some cases is that if you have a relation field um, and you add a relation to some other object, then this uh, a relation value is added to that field. And that relation uh, value is not only in, in that field, which is just in, in that list, for example, for relation list fields, but it also has a parent pointer to the set object. And it's also in the B tree of the relation catalog. So this object, the relation value has two refer is referenced twice uh, or has two references and has references to objects. So one, one of the tricky things there is when you migrate from archetypes to dexterity, the relation values have, have uh, still have references to the archi old archetype object, which prevents the, uh, the uh, ZODB um, packing from uh, garbage collecting these archetype objects. You, so you have deadish archetypes or type objects living in your database and you can, but you can easily get uh, around that by clicking this button. And uh, yeah, there's also added complexity with int IDs and stuff like that. I don't want to get into that. You can just use that button and a lot of your problems will be gone in the future, probably in relations with regards to relations. 
So again, uh, in plan six, this is built in. In plan five, you can use collective relation helpers. It has exactly the same uh, user interfaces, just not a, it's, it doesn't register its own profile. So it doesn't have a uh, control panel link, which it's not really terrible because you can just remember uh, the URL for that. Uh, number three. Uh, helpers to manage, inspect, and rebuild relations. 60 minutes. Okay, I'm, I think I'm good in time. Uh, so uh, the control panel uh, uses, obviously, uses a lot of logic to do that stuff, to export, uh, store, restore, rebuild, link stuff. And all of that is exposed in a module called relation helper in CMF Plone, and then has these handy methods that are written in such a way uh, that it's not a the internal API of a tool or something or crazy adapters. They are super dumb methods. Uh, that you can easily use in upgrade steps. Uh, for example, you can just say uh, rebuild relations and you don't even have to pass anything. It just works and it rebuilds relations for everything. It gets the portal and so on and so forth. So that is, uh, that's very useful, for example, as an upgrade step um, in an upgrade step. Uh, yes. And again, the same methods for Plone 5 exist in collective relation helpers. But there is more. Uh, the fourth thing is uh, better and more relation fields. So um, the default relation fields in Plone look like this. And they can uh, be config configured uh, to do whatever you want. So the first one is an example of just a simple relation list field. You can link anything. The second one only allows documents. The third one only allows, is, is a relation choice and it only allows documents. Third one, the, the visual difference is, is almost none, uh, but you will, you will, I will show you in, in a demo in a second. And the fourth one is the relation list field in search mode. So um, yeah. I will show them how they work quickly. Uh, these are not new, by the way. These are just uh, different. I'll get to what that all means in a second. So this is the normal uh, relation choice, relation list where you can add as many as you want. Uh, pick just what you want. Uh, relation choice only for documents and events, uh, only for documents in this case. Oh, it only allows one item. So you see that uh, everything is grayed out except for the one item. And relation list field in search mode. It, that is very interesting if you have a huge site and you don't want people to navigate to where they need to go, uh, should go, then you configure it to use the search mode and it shows you nothing, obviously. Why does it show you nothing? What's wrong here? I uh, need to reload this thing, probably. It used to work a second ago. Let's try that again. Hmm. Okay, well, whatever. It, it, it works, believe me. Um, I'll, I'll get to uh, how, uh, how they are configured in a second. So, yeah, and the, the next ones are more, more interesting because these are, if you have a relation, no, let's, sorry, let's go back to that and look at the example um, here where, I, where you see uh, the code for that because some of them, no, sorry, I, uh, I think I messed that up. Yes, because I have that here in a second. Good. Um, yeah, never mind. Please don't. So, okay, uh, this is that's the default relation field. But from now on, or a couple of months ago, uh, starting then, you can use alternative widgets for relation fields. So this is a select a widget, the first one, a uh, radio buttons, um, a select field from a named vocabulary, which you can figure for the uh, check boxes, the Ajax select field, which is uh, useful uh, it, because it doesn't do that many queries and you have to type 
uh, at least two or three uh, characters, however you configure it, uh, before it shows you any results. So, and this is how the th whole thing works. These are the code examples that I wanted to show. So this is a very simple example of a default relation field. So the very, 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 very first, uh, but it's, co it's constrained to document in end event. Um, this is a more complex um, one, which is also, um, constrained to speakers um, and has a optimization that limits the catalog query. So this is a relation list for that. Uh, it only shows you uh, speakers no matter where they are in the catalog because in line 19, you see the uh, widget is configured to use the search mode. So once you click on, in, on edit, it lists you all speakers no matter where they are in the page. The problem being, if you click on browse, then there is there's these two buttons and you can navigate through the page and your users will be super lost very easily. Um, that is where this comes in very handily because uh, there is now a new static catalog vocabulary. You see the import in line one. And if you configure your field with the static catalog vocabulary, you can pass a catalog query and use any kind of widget which was not possible before. So here you get a select widget and it only shows documents and events that are published. And there is no way that a user can start navigating and searching and getting lost in the whole thing. This does exactly the same, but with a radio widget. Um, and it works beautifully. I just, um, I wanted to show you the, where is the crap, this is the wrong. Nope. Here, yep. So here is the uh, radio buttons, check boxes, uh, relation list with items uh, from a vocabulary. You can select multiple ones. And this is the Ajax select field. So if you click there, uh, you had, need to enter uh, at least uh, two characters uh, event in this case. Something is seriously wrong with my demo instance here, but still. So these are the examples uh, that I wanted to show you. Uh, this is the, uh, the Ajax select widget. And you see a couple of uh, tidbits that are interesting in line 21. You can configure the, the displayed uh, text because in some cases you have a lot of people who are called Müller, for example, or Smith. And if uh, that's the title or the, the, the title uh, thing of your object uh, field, then uh, you will have the same results in your, in your select uh, or in your radio buttons. The ID is obviously different because you use the UUID for that, but uh, you will not be able to differentiate between these different people. So in this case, we use uh, the type and the title at path. So it, you can path the, uh, um, create a, um, something that is uh, good and uniquely findable. So minimum uh, input length is two and the Ajax wait 50 milliseconds after typing to make a new query. If you have huge databases, this can uh, make, uh, make a real difference. So did you memorize all of that? These or make screenshots? I hope not because you don't have to. It's all documented. The most important one is the example content type. That is, a package that I created uh, a while ago, and it has, has uh, examples for all field types that exist in Plone. And it has, from uh, since a while ago, it has examples for all these field types and you can copy and paste what you want so you don't have to memorize all of that, including all the, uh, some of the fancy uh, options here, for example, the two milliseconds, uh, no, here, 500 milliseconds and all the uh, other uh, alternative uh, widget uh, ways uh, that you can use here. And it's also documented in the Mastering Plone training. So there's a whole chapter on that. And there is a couple of uh, examples that you can copy and paste from. So don't, no need to memorize all of that. Um, there is a little more. There are relation fields without relations. I just told you that there is this parent pointer on relation values. So the problem with relation values is not only that 
they can mess up your migrations is that the parent needs to be as an object but in uh, the portal registry that doesn't work if you have a registry value that you want to set in a a uh, control panel, uh, you don't have a object uh, on which you can, that you can assign as a parent, uh, or it, does, it doesn't even have a UUID that you can point to from where, uh, there, because there is just no lo location, no real object. Um, so uh, the way around that is to just store a UUID instead of a relation value. But in many cases, you still want the related items field widget. That's the name of the default related items widget. So you can do that. If you um, use this pattern, it's just the point here is just use choice instead of or list and then um, uh, value type choice. Um, and you get the same user interface, but it doesn't store a relation value, it just stores a UUID. Obviously, it has a downside, which is one of the upsides of relations is when you delete one of the objects, Plone automatically goes ahead and deletes the relation from the relation catalog and make, does some cleanup magic that doesn't, so you don't get in, inconsistent uh, uh, catalog results from the relation catalog. This wouldn't happen here, obviously, because you're just storing a string. So it's kind of dumb, uh, but it works excellently as a user interface. And um, as long as you don't uh, manage your whole application around that, that shouldn't be. Uh, such a big problem. This is another example of a um, UUID field. In this case, a schema list, and uh, you pass a vocabulary. And again, you use static catalog vocabulary to use a different widget, checkbox field widget. And you can easily use that in a control panel uh, or on non uh, in non-contentish places. So what about Volto? That's kind of the elephant in the room. I didn't, uh, yeah, there's always uh, a but. Um, the related items field. So the one relation field that we have in Plone, the, the only one that we have is not displayed. So you can edit it, but it doesn't have, yeah, you don't see anything. Okay, uh, if you have a relation choice field, it is broken. I thought, saw Tiberio, uh, Tiberio tried to do something yesterday. I'm not sure if he's already finished. And none of the new widget types actually work. So you can't configure a relation field to use checkboxes, lists. Obviously, a normal select field like relation choice also doesn't work. So what the actual fuck? I created tickets for that, like uh, the first ticket I created the end of last year, and I created more tickets spring this year. I'm absolutely happy to work on that together with all of you. And there is a couple of do to do's that we need to fix to make all of that uh, work seamlessly in Volto. Uh, one is obviously to have some component that is beautifully reusable to display related items so that the default related item feel on the content in Plone that does not use only blocks because we have. Uh, I don't know, seven types, default types in Plone, and only documents use blocks by default. All the others are schema driven. So, um, and also documents are schema driven. So related items somehow should show up. I'm sure that is a uh, tricky UI issue and I'm happy not to have to solve that myself, but yeah, uh, someone, we should solve that at some point. Then the relation choice field obviously need to be needs to be fixed. There needs to be support for the alternative widgets for relation fields so that you can use radio buttons and checkboxes so you don't have to navigate through the whole portal uh, in the really, really beautiful relation widget that Volto uses. The, the, you see, you know, it's the same as the image picker and the link picker. Uh, so that's really, really good. I'm happy with that. But well, we also need support for uh, simple drop downs, uh, radio buttons, and checkboxes. And I know Volto can do these because the search block, which I love, uh, actually supports those. They have it has those. And maybe, maybe, maybe we actually need a endpoint in Plone REST API to query relations because a lot of the data in Plone is schema uh, driven. And you can create like these the family tree in the very beginning, but also other business uh, applications. Uh, you can build them on top 
of relations. And it would be a shame to not be able to use this data that already exists in, um, in Volto. I know relation fields are serialized already, but it would be good to have, uh, maybe good to have additional support to query relations uh, through the REST API. Uh, could be based on the methods in Plone API or whatever. I'm open for any kind of discussions there. Thank you very much for your attention. And also let me extend thanks to everyone, all the people who worked on that. Uh, Alec Mitchell uh, foremost, who uh, got worked with me for at least three days to get through all these data manager craziness and created the static catalog, catalog vocabulary. Uh, Maritz von Ries, who took my code from Collective Relation Helpers and made it sane in Plone API, and Pichesi Julian, who helped him to do that. Uh, thanks, and I'd be happy to discuss anything and any all kinds of questions in the Jitsi. And I have no time, no idea how 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 we are with time. Oh, We've actually we got about fifteen minutes left. Thank you, Philip. That was that was brilliant. Um, I had, there was some discussion in the Slack about the code of conduct, but I'm, I'm sure you're going to be fine. <laughs> and slap me around with the trout. Oh, please. Yeah. You know, here in Wisconsin, it's, it's, um, sturgeon. If you can, if you can find a six, a, sorry, a two meter sturgeon and hit me with it, then I think that would be wonderful. Oh, but, uh, the relations control panel is fantastic. It looks brilliant. And, uh, I loved how you correctly pointed out that if you just click that one button, all your problems will be solved. All right. Well, thank you again, Philip. And um, you're going to be joining us in the Jitsi, which, Yay. of course, for you viewers, is the blue button underneath the video frame here. And so thank you again, Philip. And uh, I look forward to seeing what more you do and additional lightning talks I'm sure you're signing up for, all of you, including Philip, right? Yes. <clears throat> Awkward silence. <laughs>